Hello, hello, grade 12s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, O Abudiwa Sos, O Kobela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. So we have question three, taken from Northwest, September 2021. Shout out to Northwest. It goes a hot air balloon is rising upwards with a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. When the balloon is 60 meters above the ground, a ball is released from it and the ball uh, falls freely. Right, then we have the diagram to uh, show all that has been written there. Then 3.1 says define the term free fall. So we're just going to quickly look uh for that definition, here it goes. It says free fall is the motion in which an object is moving under the influence of gravitational force only where there is no air resistance. So that's our definition. Then uh, 3.2 says what is the velocity of the ball at the moment when it is released from the balloon? So now this is what I want you to understand when it comes to this. Right. Uh, as much as we have covered that when they write words like a ball is released or a ball is dropped, we say the initial velocity is zero. Not with this one. This is a hot air balloon question. And then with these questions, we have to consider the law of inertia or Newton's first law, which says that an object will continue in a state of rest or uniform motion or constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. So we do understand that the ball was inside the hot air balloon and the hot air balloon was moving at 5 meters per second, which means the, the ball was also experiencing a velocity of 5 meters per second. Now, upon its release, it now has a, an initial velocity of 5 meters per second because remember, it continues in that state of constant velocity so actually uh, based on the perception of the one that is throwing the ball or releasing the ball from the hot air balloon this is what he will see he will just see the ball draw, dropping downward like that but then this is what actually happens according to the law of inertia the ball will continue in that state of constant velocity in that state of uniform motion uh, in the direction of the hot air balloon until it reaches a maximum height and then turns from that maximum height and goes downward. So this is actually the trajectory of the ball, not this one. So when the ball is released, it, it does not just go downward like that. It starts by moving upward, reaches a maximum height, and then goes down here. Obviously, this is not something that a person who's here would see. But then uh, observing from a distance, maybe you, you were on top of a building and then you see this hot air balloon moving upward like that, you'd actually testify that you you saw the ball uh, momentarily going upward and then changing the direction, right? So this is the trajectory of the ball when it is released or dropped from that hot air balloon. So now what we need to understand is that uh, since it's coming from the hot air balloon and the hot air balloon was moving at a velocity of 5 meters per second, then also the velocity of the ball itself needs to be five meters per second so that's all that you needed to understand with this question which is why it is one mark and it is saying what is remember in physical sciences when they just write what is that means they're looking for the magnitude and most of the time you will just find that uh, it is just right here on your diagram or on your statement right so that's all you needed to write five meters per second then 3.3, .3, calculate the maximum height reached by the ball. Right. So how can we calculate that? Uh, let's collect our data. So going, going up there to collect our data, we have the V initially of the ball, which is a uh, 5 meters per second, as we already discussed, that it will take the velocity of the hot air balloon. But uh, reaching the maximum height, remember keyword maximum height, the V finally then needs to be 0 meters per second. 
and then our acceleration if we are taking upward is positive since now we can see that the initial direction of the board will be upward so let's just take upward as positive and then our a will be negative 9.8 meters per second square now we are looking for delta y remember we are looking a uh, for the maximum height in which it will reach so that could be calculated by a uh, delta y now looking at all this uh, what is the most suitable formula to use so we're just going to go to the formula sheet here and then look for the suitable formula so that's all you do collect your data and then look for the suitable formula that corresponds obviously uh, to what you have here now looking at all this we can see that uh, the correct formula to use would obviously be a uh, formula number two we have vf we have vi and then we have our a and then we are looking for delta y so the second formula is the best one to use then let's go vf squared is equals to v i squared plus 2 a delta y then what's v f squared that's zero square v i is five and then square and then our a negative 9.8 delta y then this gives us 25 if we transpose it over to the side it's negative 25 if we multiply this that's negative 19.6 and then delta y dividing both sides by negative 19.6 like that then we have our solution is a uh, delta y is equals to 1.28 meters okay and now we have 3.4 it says how far apart will the ball and the balloon be three seconds after the ball is released so this is for a total of six marks now this is not the part where you panic this is actually the part where you understand that this is six marks because you'll be using more than one formula right so remember we are talking about the ball and we are talking about the balloon so that means we would calculate uh, the distance covered by the balloon and then also calculate uh, the distance covered by the ball and try to find the difference or maybe uh, find how far apart are they so we do understand that that the ball will just be going momentarily up and then downward and then but uh, the hot air balloon will just continue moving upward like that so now we are trying to find how far apart will these uh, two objects be three seconds after the ball has been released from the hot air balloon so this is how we can go about tackling that question so let's first collect the data for the ball we already discussed that we have the v initially is a uh, five meters per second and then uh, we have our delta t is given as three seconds there and then also we have the a is negative 9.8 meters per second square now we do understand this part already that if we chose upward as positive from the very first question then uh, we are fully committed to that we won't change it any any anywhere else in the question right so we need to uh, solve all the questions using negative 9.8 meters per second square then what are we looking for we are looking for delta y so what formula is most suitable for that let's uh, visit our formula sheet so this is what you want to always be doing guys collect your data visit the formula sheet then uh, looking at this we can see vi check delta t check a check and then we are looking for delta y so the most suitable formula is formula number three right so uh, to calculate that we'll just go uh, delta y is equals to vi delta t plus half and then a delta t square right then my vi is five delta t is three here and then plus half my a is negative 9.8 and then delta t is three seconds once again so punching all this in your calculator you have a value of negative 29 point one meter but understand this guys this negative 29.1 meter is coming from here remember the ball is going a uh, upward reaches a maximum height at a, a height of 1.28 meter then it goes back to the initial position in which it was uh, released which is 1.2 meter downward 
So now considering that our delta y is the displacement, if this goes upward and then covers the same distance going downward, we say the displacement is zero because the same distance in which it went up, it also went back down, right? But then it crosses over the point of release, obviously, and then goes uh, down there but then doesn't cover all this distance, only manages to cover a distance of 29.1 meter below the point of release. So this this 29.1 meter is actually telling us the, about the displacement, the displacement from the point of release up until it comes uh, to this point here. So it went all the way up there and then uh, covered uh, the displacement then covered a distance from the point of release here coming uh, coming down from the point of release up until a certain height here uh, covered a distance of 29.1 meter so the 29.1 meter is actually representing the displacement right this is not the distance that was covered in three seconds it is actually the displacement that we get in three seconds right so the, the whole distance, to get the whole distance, you'll say 1.28 plus 1.28 plus 29.1, right? Which is not what we are looking for. Remember, we are just trying to locate the position. So now we can just say uh, this here, from this point of release, it's just 29.1 meter downwards, right? So the ball is 29.1 meter downwards below the point of release after three seconds then let's calculate the position of the balloon three seconds after the uh, after the ball was released then we have the vi which is also five meters per second it's moving at a constant velocity of five meters per second then our delta t is also three seconds as well but our acceleration because the hot air balloon is not undergoing free fall Remember, with the hot air balloon, it is not only the gravitational force that is acting on the hot air balloon. We also have uh, the, the force of the engine, which acts as our force applied. And then obviously, because this is a bigger object, we can say it is experiencing air friction. And then uh, there are so many forces involved in this hot air balloon. But then now they are saying it's moving at a constant velocity, meaning the acceleration has to be 0 meters per second. Remember the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second for a projectile, for an object that is undergoing free fall, which is only experiencing the force of gravity. But with the hot air balloon, it is not undergoing free fall. Therefore, its acceleration needs to be 0 meters per second square per second square pardon me for that and then uh, our delta y is the one that we are looking for so let's calculate delta y for the balloon vi delta t plus half a and then delta t square now we'll have our vi is 5 delta t is 3 plus half here we have 0 and then 3 square so this part here will just be zero. So we have five times three is a uh, 15 meter. Now note this, the ball, the ball went 29.1 meter below the point of release in three seconds. Then the hot air balloon went 15 meters above the point of a release so that's 15 meters above the point of release and the ball 29.1 meter below the point of release but what are we looking for we are looking for the distance in between our hot air balloon and the ball so if the ball is 29.1 meter below the point of release and the hot air balloon is 15 meter above the point of release, what is the distance? How far apart is the hot air balloon and the ball? All we need to do is take this 15 meter here and then add it to the 29.1 meter, right? So to find the distance in between the hot air balloon and the ball is just to say 15 plus 29.1 and then this will give us 44.1 meters 
So that's all you needed to do in order to tackle that question. So it was six marks you needed to understand what you needed to do there. But then it's all an easy process. As we can see, we have involved two uh, formulas. So this was the first formula that we used to calculate uh, the board. And then it happened that we also needed the same formula to calculate for the balloon. Now uh, allocating the marks there so that you understand what uh, you needed to do there. If we were just to allocate the marks, we'd be given a mark here. And then mark for this, mark for that. Then since it's the same formula, they will just mark this. And then to add this, it will be a mark. So that's how you'd get your six marks. So understand that you do not have to panic when you see uh, questions with about six marks, seven marks. It's just a matter of knowing that you have to apply more than one formula. Then uh, let's proceed. Let's proceed. We have a statement here. It says the ball hits the ground bounces vertically upward to a height of 8 meters above the ground. It falls back to the ground and bounces again to reach a height of 5 meters above the ground. Now 3.5 says explain why the ball does not, does not reach the same height uh, during the second bounce. Right. So the situation that we have here is that a, a ball was falling to the ground bounced for the first time and then reached a height of 8 meters then bounced for the second time reached a height of 5 meters now they say explain why does the ball not reach the same height during the second bounce now you can simply explain this and say it's because the collusion between the ball and the ground is inelastic Right. So we know with an inelastic collusion, some of the kinetic energy will be lost to the ground. And then this is the kinetic energy that will be converted either to heat energy or to sound energy. So all we can just say here is that there is an inelastic collusion. There, there, is, there is an inelastic collusion between the ball and the ground right and then we can say some of the kinetic energy is lost during the collusion So for two marks, that's what you were just supposed to say. Either this or that, uh, all would be just correct for two marks. Then um, that's how you were supposed to tackle this question for a total of 15 marks. So hopefully, if you were doing it on your own, you could have uh, grabbed all those 15 marks to yourself. So please press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson. Then if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please 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 subscribe to the channel but most importantly please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance remember do not be selfish we are winning as a team